Hi boys and girls and welcome back to another one of our first grade animals and habitat learning activities. Today we're going to read about lesson two which is animals of the arctic habitat. I'm Mr. Vanderwerf in case you don't recognize me. I'm a first grade teacher that's upstairs on the second floor right across from the music room. All right, boys and girls, let's start out with our vocabulary. Those are words that I'm going to be reading during the story that I really wanted you to know what they meant. And I wrote them up here so you could see how they were spelled. The first word is adapted. When we talk about adaptation or adapted, it means that something is changed to suit a specific purpose or situation. For example, over the years, animals that live in the Arctic have adapted to the cold, which means they're able to survive in the cold weather. The second word that you're going to hear me say during this read aloud is the word burrow. Burrow means to dig a hole or a tunnel. For example, rabbits burrow underground to make their home. We actually have bunnies in our yard right now and I'm sure that they have a burrow somewhere in the yard where they have made their home. Exposed is our third word boys and girls and that means left unprotected. Put out in the open with no type of covering. If you had a bike and you left it outside it would be exposed to the elements like rain and snow and over time it would start to rust because it was left unprotected from those elements. And the last word you're going to hear in today's read aloud is tundra. The tundra is a treeless area in a specific part of the Arctic that you will be learning about today. All right, boys and girls, if you are ready, let's do a quick review of what you learned when Ms. Kakavo read with you. The first thing we talked about was, or that she talked about, was habitats. Can you tell me what a habitat is? It's a specific place that a living organism lives, and there's three things that a habitat has to have. Do you remember them? Did you say food? Did you say water? Did you say shelter? Those are the three things, boys and girls, that a habitat needs. Now, we've been I'm going to be talking about the Arctic region today. The Arctic region is the area around the North Pole, and it's made up of a, of a land area that's called the tundra, that treeless area we talked about. And it's made up of a water area, which we refer to as the Arctic Ocean. All right, boys and girls, today, you will hear about some plants and animals that live in the Arctic region, both on land and in the water. Listen carefully to find out which plants and animals live in the Arctic tundra and in the Arctic Ocean, and how do they survive there. Are we ready? Let's begin. Today you're going to be learning about the place that's up here in the yellow on your map. This is called the Arctic region, boys and girls. And again, just to review, we said the Arctic region is the place around the North Pole. And it's made up of two things, a land area called the tundra and a water area called the Arctic Ocean. Here's our good buddy Rattenboro, and he's going to take us around the Arctic right now. And if you notice, he's dressed very warm. So that might give you a hint about the climate or the weather that you would find in the Arctic region. Hello again. Rattenboro the Adventurer here to take you on a tour of one of the coldest habitats on Earth. The Arctic Tundra. In the tundra, there aren't very many plants. In fact, there are no trees at all. And a rat like me has to wear long johns and mittens to stay warm. The wind here is incredibly strong, 
which makes the air feel even colder. The ground is frozen and nearly everything is covered in ice. In the winter, daylight only lasts a few hours and at times the sun does not come out at all. Some ice will still be here in the summer, but in the summer the top layer of ice melts so that the ground gets wet and muddy. The temperatures here are so low that most people and animals would freeze. All of these things make the Arctic tundra one of the least friendliest habitats on Earth for plants and for animals. Some plants and animals can only live in the Arctic tundra during what we call their summer months when the temperature there is a little warmer, but some are able to live there all year long. Arctic plants grow very close together and they do not grow very tall, which keeps them from being blown away by those strong Arctic winds that we talked about. The kinds of plants that can live in the Arctic tundra are mosses and different types of grasses. For once, I, Rattenboro, am one of the tallest things around. Ooh, he looks very nice. The animals that call the Arctic tundra habitat home all year round have adapted to the harsh conditions. When an animal has adapted to a habitat, that means it has changed over the years and now has special things that help it live in that habitat. For example, many ar animals in the Arctic have adapted by growing heavy fur coats that help them to stay warm in the cold temperatures. This creature is called a muskox. The muskox's long, shaggy coat has an extra layer of hair underneath that keeps him warm when the temperature is cold enough to turn a rat into a popsicle. And it sheds its extra coat of hair in the warmer summer months. Muskoxen travel in herds, that's a group of them together, so that they can huddle together for added warmth. Their hooves, there's their hooves, are very wide to keep them from slipping on the ice and the snow. In the winter, muskoxen use their sharp hooves to dig under the snow to find plants to eat. Here comes an animal I want to stay hidden from. This is the wolverine. The wolverine uses its fur coat to keep nice and warm. Like the muskox, the wolverine has large paws to help him move across the snow that come in handy when he's trying to catch his food. I'm sure you all recognize this animal. These animals are called caribou, and they're part of the deer family. They are sometimes called reindeer. These caribou are also traveling in a large herd which helps to protect them against attack by other animals. Caribou's hair traps air in it, it's almost hollowish which keep, helps keep these animals warm. Their hooves change actually depending on the time of year. So they can walk and run in mushy, wet terrain or in hard, icy terrain. Male caribou also have antlers that help them dig for grass because that's what they eat in the snow. 
This guy's looking right at us. This Arctic fox also has a coat that changes during the winter from a brown summer coat into this thick, very thick actually, white fur to help the fox blend in to his surroundings. The fur also keeps its feet, so covers its feet, excuse me, the fur covers its feet so it can walk on the snow and ice. Thanks to the fox's fur, it can hide and sneak up on birds, hares, which is another name for rabbits, and rodents, like me, Rattenborough. Speaking of the Arctic hare, the Arctic hare's white coat becomes much heavier in the wintertime. Its ears are smaller than those of other hares or rabbits, meaning less of its body is exposed, unprotected, remember, to the cold. In other words, this is no place for critters with long, dangly ears unless they have long, dangly earmuffs to cover those ears. The hare's white coloring also helps it hide in the snow and its back feet are wide and large, like small little snowshoes, so it can run really fast in the snow. There are other types of habitats in the Arctic besides the tundra we just learned about, and different kinds of plants and animals live in these habitats too. The Arctic Ocean is a habitat rich in sea life and animals that rely on the sea for their food. The water is so cold in the Arctic Ocean that most living creatures would be able to stay alive only in it for a few minutes. Not a place to go swimming. These guys are called walruses. Animals such as walruses call the Arctic Ocean home. These huge creatures just love the icy water and can swim around for long periods of time. Walruses have adapted to the life in the Arctic by storing blubber, it's like extra fat, that they store under their skin. Blubber prevents heat from escaping from their bodies. Walruses also have long teeth called, does anyone know what those are called? Starts with a T. Tusks, which they use almost like arms to pull themselves up out of the water and onto the ice. That's a very interesting fact. Look at these cute animals, boys and girls. They are seals. Seals have blubber under their skin, just like the walrus. Some types of seals are born with a layer of white fur to keep them warm until they get that, they develop that blubber under their skin. Seals are incredible swimmers. Like fish and walruses, seals don't have arms and legs. Instead, seals have flippers and they swim by wiggling their bodies from side to side and they use their flippers to steer. They swim very fast, so they can catch plenty of tasty fish. Thankfully, they don't eat rats. Here comes a polar bear. Look out. Let's hide behind this rock, and I'll tell you all about this amazing creature. The polar bear is perhaps the best known of all the animals living around the Arctic Ocean. These astonishing animals have adapted incredibly well to the harsh Arctic habitat. Polar bears are the largest bears in the world. Male polar bears weigh up to 1,700 pounds. That's probably heavier than everyone in our class put together, including the teacher. And polar bears grow up to 10 feet tall from head to toe. Yikes. 
Polar bears are covered with a heavy coat made up of two layers of fur. And they have a layer of blubber under their skin as well. Their ears and tails are very small so that not too much of their bodies are exposed, left unprotected, to the cold weather. It's a good thing they have all that fur and blubber and sharp claws because polar bears spend most of their life living on sea ice. Chunks of ice that float in the Arctic Ocean. Sometimes polar bears take a dip in the icy Arctic water to swim from one chunk of ice to another. And they have webbed paws, some of which, some sort of like a duck's feet, to help them swim. They use these mighty paws to hunt their favorite food. Does anyone know what they eat? Seals. Like all living things, polar bears need water to survive and they get that water from melted snow and from the ice. Cute, huh? Even though adult polar bears spend most of their time living on sea ice, polar bear babies or cubs are actually born on land. Their mothers, the female polar bears, burrow in the snow, they dig a tunnel in the snow, to make a den. Then they will hide there in the den while they have their babies. They stay in the dens with their babies all winter and in the spring they finally come out. The cubs stay with their mothers for almost two years to learn how to hunt and survive before leaving home. Now, speaking of home, I really must go. It's absolutely frigid here, and my whiskers warmers just aren't doing the job. We've learned a lot about the Arctic habitat and the animals that have managed to adapt and survive here. I think our next stop should be someplace warmer. Wouldn't you agree? Remember that even habitats as extremely cold as the Arctic tundra and the Arctic Ocean can be full of all different kinds of life. Now, it's not easy for me to stay hidden in all this snow and I can barely move with all these clothes on, so I'm getting out of here before I'm spotted by that Arctic fox. See you next time. Okay, boys and girls, I hope you really enjoyed that story. Now what I'd like to do is just ask you a few questions about what you learned today about the Arctic and Arctic animals. Here's your first question. I want you to describe to me the Arctic tundra. What is it like? Go ahead, think about it. If you want to, start yelling out your answers. What is it like there? Think of the weather. Did anyone say it's cold there? You're right. And we talked about the wind. It's very windy there, right? We talked about the ground. What is the ground like? In the winter time, it is frozen. Right, right. And in the summertime, the top layer of ice melts and it's kind of mushy, wet, muddy. Is there trees in the Arctic? No, no trees. Good. Excellent. Okay, describe the Arctic Ocean. What is the Arctic Ocean like? Well, we know it's water, right? I know everybody already yelled that out, so. What kind of water is it? Is it steaming hot water? No, no, no. It's very, very, very cold water. And it's, if you get in there for too long, you would not be able to survive. What floats in the Arctic Ocean. Polar bears go from one to another. Remember we talked about ice chunks. Good, you guys got that. Great, great. Why is it important for living creatures to adapt to the habitat that they live in? Think about that. Why is it important for them to adapt to the habitat that they live in? Let me ask you a question. Are there any crocodiles or alligators that live in Batavia? 
No, no. Does anyone know why? Because they haven't been adapted to the temperature change that Batavia goes through. They cannot survive during our cold winter months. They need weather all year round like our hot to warm summer months. So the question was, why is it important? Well, they need to be able to survive there. They need to be able to find food there. So if some of those animals didn't have their hooves in different shapes, they wouldn't be able to run across the ice to catch other animals that are their food. Or they wouldn't be able to survive because they would freeze to death. So remember, a habitat has to provide food, water, and shelter. And those, those are things that are really important. What kind of plants grow in the Arctic tundra? There's two different types that we mentioned in the video. Quickly. One is grasses. There's different types of grasses. That's what the caribou eat, so that provides the caribou food. Does anybody remember what I call the other one? It starts with a m sound. Mosses. Great, great, excellent. And how have those plants adapted to living in the tundra? There was a couple of things we said. First of all, they don't grow very tall, right? So they're not blown away by those gusts of wind. And they grow during the warmer months and then go away during the icier months, right? During the winter months. Excellent. How have walruses, seals, and polar bears all adapted to keep warm? So I'm looking for one thing I told you about all three of them. They all have something that helps them keep warm. Does anybody remember? Yell it out. It starts with a b sound. Did you yell blubber? You're right. It's that thick layer of fat that grows under their skin and they store it under their skin and it, it insulates them or keeps them warm. Excellent. How have walruses adapted so that they can get from the water onto the ice chunks? How do they do that? They don't have arms. How do they do that, boys and girls? What do they use? Do you remember? Their tusks, right. Good job, good job. Can you tell me a few ways that polar bears have adapted to living in the Arctic. We talked about one of them, which is, what is that stuff, that fat that they put on, they, they store under their skin? It starts with a book sound. Blubber, right? What were some of the other ways that we talked about? How many layers of fur does a polar bear have? Two layers, right, excellent. And what about their ears and their tail? Do you remember what we said about that? They have small ears and a small tail so that not much of their body is exposed or left unprotected to the elements. Excellent, excellent. And what about their, their uh, paws? Do you remember anything? They have sharp claws and big paws, wide like a webbed paw that helps them to swim. Excellent. Boys and girls, this has been wonderful today. Thank you for joining us to, learning, to learn about the Arctic habitat and have a wonderful day.